So today we are going to be learning about an American artist whose name is Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe was an American artist that grew up in the late 1800s and she was one of the first female artists of America to really make a name for herself. She was born in Wisconsin in 1887. She grew up on a very small farm with her family. She was like the black sheep or the weird one out of the family. So she was born 137 years ago. So she would not be alive today. And one cool fact about Georgia O'Keeffe is that she was given a one-woman exhibition in 1946 at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The first given by that museum to any woman. So she was very influential as far as women go in the art world and really paved the way for women artists in America. She actually did not like school at all. She hated going to school, but her parents knew the value of going to school. So they bribed her to go to school by telling her that she could have private art lessons after school, which she loved. She was not a big fan of traditional school. She didn't like math, reading, science, but she did love art class. And this is a time when art class wasn't really a part of the no normal school day. So her parents paid for this private artist to come and give her lessons where she learned all the techniques that you guys are learning today. She's learning how to grid draw. She's learning how to use art properly. And after she finished high school, Georgia started taking art classes in college. So she went on to art school. She learned many different styles of painting, including abstract art while she was in college. If you remember, abstract art doesn't look like a real person, place, or thing. It's mostly made up of lines, shapes, and colors. So it doesn't have to have a true subject. Splatter paint could be a version of abstract art. Anything that doesn't have something that the artist specifically wants you to recognize and look at is considered abstract art. So this painting that you see here is an abstract painting of a flower. But you wouldn't know that based on the colors that she used and how zoomed in she is and even the background. Georgia later bought a house with her husband on a lake, and this is where she did some of her most famous paintings. She painted up-close pictures, mostly of flowers, but she often did other things such as skulls or other things that she found beautiful. She used bright and beautiful colors, so she liked to exaggerate the color a lot in her artworks. And she didn't always stick to what was exactly her reference, but she always did use a reference, which was what you guys are going to be doing today as well. She examined the flowers very carefully before she painted them. She paid very close attention to all the details inside the flower and on the petals and around it. She wanted to really enhance these pictures. We would call this macro photography nowadays. She said that she liked to paint them so large so that people would take time to really look at flowers and see how beautiful they are. Sometimes she painted her flowers so close up that you could almost not even tell that it was a flower. So like I said, we use macro photography today where you get real up close. If you've ever seen a picture of like dew on grass, that's considered macro photography. This is before photography was a really big thing and color photography wasn't invented yet. So if you wanted to paint something or get an artwork that was really up close, you had to paint it yourself. And that is what she did. She was kind of the start of this whole macro, up close, zoomed in trend that we even have nowadays. George O'Keeffe was a very creative and original artist. She was the only artist of her time who painted big, beautiful, and up close paintings of flowers. She continued to paint for her entire life until she eventually grew old and lost her eyesight. So she lived to be 98 years old, and she lived a very long and happy life, but she painted and kept painting until she couldn't do it anymore. 
So here are some other pictures of Georgia O'Keeffe's flower paintings that you might recognize from a long time ago. But she would sometimes abstract her picture so much that it didn't even look like a flower. You wouldn't be able to tell what kind of flower you were looking at by some of her paintings. And that is okay. That's her interpretation of the flower. So that is going to lead us to our project. What I want you guys to do is to Google search some flowers or plants zoomed in. So we're looking at that macro photography that I talked about. And you are going to recreate one of these pictures in the Georgia O'Keeffe style. So we're going to draw out one of these pictures. You're going to be able to choose whichever one you want. So for example purposes, I'm going to use this succulent and you want to save the picture to your Chromebook so that you have the reference later. So I'm going to use this succulent here as a demonstrative. Now I'm going to draw onto the computer screen so that you can see what I'm talking about. But you're going to start with a very basic shape. I'm starting with a very bad circle just so that I can get something started. I can go back in and fix that later. But then you're going to start looking back and forth between your picture and start drawing out the petals. Now it's really hard to do on a computer screen. So I did a drawing of it, a real drawing that you can see on the board. And I copied it to the best of my ability. Now, if it doesn't look exactly like how you want it to look like, that's okay. Remember, she abstracted a lot of her projects or a lot of her paintings. So if it doesn't look perfect, that's okay. Because George O'Keeffe's didn't always look perfect. And flowers aren't perfect. So I just want you to draw your very best interpretation and representation of the flower that you choose. Make sure you save the picture so that you can use it as reference for color later. And then trace out or draw out all of the different petals and things that you see in the picture. We really want to fill the page for this. We want there to be almost no background. So making your pictures and your flowers really big is very important. Take up as much room as you can on your paper. Alright, today I'm going to give you a little demonstration on how to use tempera paint. Tempera paint is a water-based paint. We've used it many times. It is easily washable, but it also has a lot of different properties that you can use to make it work how you want. If you just want it to be opaque, all you have to do is take the paint. Opaque means you can't see through it and put it down in its normal way and I am mixing my colors together as I go here on my paper you don't have to mix them on a paint palette or anything you can mix them right as you go it's a great thing about tempera paint they mix very easily and they stay wet for a little bit of time. So that's why I'm able to mix this. They're not instantly drying. They are fast drying, but they're not instantly drying. Another cool thing though, is if, if, if I want this to be more transparent or see-through, all I have to do is add a little water to it and it will make it more see-through. I know that's hard to see right now, but when I get down over here, you'll see it a little bit better. So I'm adding more water to it and I'm hydrating it, giving it more water. And now it's starting to look more see-through. So if I wanted to take this color that I have here and I wanted to put it really lightly inside this area here, I could do that. I could also even add more water and make it almost like a watercolor paint by just adding a very, very little bit, bit amount of paint to a lot of water. So up here we have opaque, then it starts to get more transparent as we go down. 
and then right here we have very opaque or very transparent and if you're gonna make it more like a watercolor painting with this transparent you can make it have more shading on it by just adding a little bit more paint more layers so now I'm starting to get a darker area here and then lighter in the middle and darker on the center so if you are using your picture that you have as reference you can look at the colors and see where it would make the most sense to do that I can even add just a little bit more blue so you can make this more like watercolor but you can also make it so that it is opaque and completely see-through just by how much paint you put on your paper. So this is very opaque. Now we're adding a little bit more water and it's getting more transparent and see-through. And then I'm gonna add even more water and it's gonna become very see-through. That's how tempera paint works. I recommend starting off with a small brush. And remember, no booty scooting ballerinas. We wanna be nice to our brush, so we're just using the tip here to brush the paint down. There, I have a couple of my leaves already done. And if I want to blend it out a little bit more, all I have to do is add more water and it will blend. Now, I didn't erase my pencil lines on purpose because I wanted you to see how hard it is to see those pencil lines once you go over them with paint because the paint really covers it up and it will start to make it hard to see. That's why we sharpied everything first so that we could tell where we're trying to stop and where we're trying to still paint. All right, I hope you have fun, guys. Try to mix the colors on the paper and not in your palette you can do multiple colors but don't worry too much remember it can be abstract And since this paint is opaque, if you make a mistake and you want to fix something, you can take pure white, undiluted with water, and cover it up. But you will have to let it dry before you paint on top of it, because otherwise it will just become whatever color you are using a little bit lighter. So if I were to take some blue now and go over this area, now it's just becoming a lighter blue. 
because it wasn't dry yet. So make sure when you're mixing that your colors are wet and when you don't want them to mix, your colors are dry.